Hello everyone and welcome to our new series of waterline tutorials. In this quick look, we're going to start with something a bit more simple for now and that is how we can add Waterline Pro to our own project. So if you've purchased Waterline, you will start off with, well, this. First of all, this might be a download button, but say we want to add this to our own existing project. So for starters, we'll have to create the project. So let's go over here. So we're going to get this pop-up where we can uh, name our project, select the folder where we created, and select the version. Now, ideally, we'd want to select the same version that we are going to be migrating the project to. So at the moment, the latest version is 5.0. So we're going to be rolling with that. And uh, let's just add some sort of a name so we can find our project quite easily. And uh, let's just hit create. And it's just going to take like a couple of minutes creating the project. And we're almost done. We're just verifying, cleaning up and complete. And boom, once uh, it's done its magic verifying and cleaning up, we have our new waterline project in the folder that we specified. So now what we need to do is launch Unreal Engine 5, which we've already done, so it's doing its thing. Uh, the important thing to note that it needs to be the same version as the Waterline Pro project that we created. So initially we created version 5.0, so we're launching 5.0 as well. So once Unreal Engine 5.0 has uh, finished uh, loading up, we get this Unreal Project Browser and we want to create a new project. So we're going to go into the games preset. You could use any one really, but let's just go with that because it's the more simpler one. We're going to go with a blank level, uh, blueprints. It's not really too important. You could use anything you want. Specify project location and project name. So we're just going to hit create. And uh, it's going to take a minute or two. So this is our brand new shiny project. Uh, it's completely blank and empty. There is nothing in the contents folder. So for the sake of this demo, we created a fresh new project, but this may very well be your existing project. Just one more thing. In our newly created project, we're going to need to add another object channel for collisions. This will help Waterline perform much better with really large landscapes. Now to do that, we just need to go to uh, edit, project settings, and in this new tab, we're just gonna search for object. Um, we're gonna get to object channels, new object channel, name, and we're gonna call it waterline. And default response, we're gonna set it to overlap. Then we hit accept, and we're all good. We can close this tab down, and now we can start moving, or rather migrating waterline to this new project. So the next thing we're going to do is close it. Next up, what we need to do is actually open our original waterline folder, which we created. That's the default waterline folder. And uh, yeah, so let's just open this up. You don't need to close the file that you're migrating to per se, but it just helps eliminate any um, errors that might occur. It's quite rare, but it does happen. And ultimately, it's just a couple of seconds it doesn't really change anything so yeah we're just gonna wait until this loads up and uh, we'll be good to go almost so our uh, default waterline project is now open and uh, let's just do a quick test make sure everything is working and imported as expected and awesome so now that we verify that everything works as expected in the original waterline pro uh, project we're gonna go into the contents folder select waterline folder, right click on it and go to migrate. It's going to gather dependencies and this will basically give us a list of all the assets that are going to get moved. So waterline is an interconnected system of blueprints and compute shaders. So a simple copy paste wouldn't work. So then we go to the, the uh, folder basically where our blank folder or existing project folder, select that go to the contents folder and basically select that. It's going to give us this pop-up and we're going to select no. And then it's going to start copying files basically. So once the copying has done its part, get a list of all the S's that have been copied successfully. If we go to copy errors, 
don't worry about these because these are render targets that get generated basically on your RAM. So they don't exist on disk and uh, it's nothing to worry about. Waterline will generate these in your new project as we run. So we can hit clear and yeah, let's open up our brand new project. So going to our folder, this is the one that we're moving to. And under content, we could see that Waterline has now showed up. And uh, let's open up this one now. So our blank or default or project that we want to move Waterline to is now loaded. So let's go to the content browser, Waterline. For the sake of argument, let's pick the same actor that we, the same map that we had before. So we're going to go to a uh, foam map and select this one. So this is the one where we were testing um, before. So it's going to take a minute or two to load. And uh, yeah, basically we're pretty much good. So let's just select our ocean and hit live ocean and everything seems to be working fine. And for most of you, this is pretty much all you need to do. But let's just check one quick thing. Let's see what happens when we hit play in this level. So um, yeah, now we're in game, the water simulation is working, but we can't move. We can just jump, funny enough. Technically we shouldn't be able to do that either, but uh, hey, let's take our wins. So what's going on here? Well, Waterline by default we includes a couple of game modes, and those are just useful for players to quickly start testing things out, like the mannequin that we've set up, the NPC over there. And you could find these in the levels under world settings. And then we can go to game mode override, the third person game mode and game mode base, which if we hit play, we basically become a free camera that we can look around. And uh, this one works. We could actually move with this one. So this is pretty good. The difference is that it has a collision and we could push things a little bit. It's not an easy job, but uh, yeah. So what's going on? Why can't we move? Well, if we open up, uh, let's just pause the live ocean like this. So if we go to our original waterline folder, we can go to edit and project settings. So what we need to do is go into input and open up or rather expand these ones. Move forward. These are action mappings. And what these do is basically the input controls for the third person character system. So we have W for move forward, S to move backwards. So let's just move this to the side. And uh, we'll just do like a couple because they can take like a couple of minutes to set up. So we go to project settings. We go to input. And then we have access mappings. We go advanced. Now we could see that these are kind of blank at the moment. And let's just dog this to the side and dog this to the other side. So what we need to do is hit the little plus sign and expand. And there we have the new access mapping. We need to keep these identical. So let's just go with just copy and paste it move forward and we're going to hit the little plus sign here as well and we're going to go with w on the keyboard and then we're going to say one which is already there we're going to add another one uh for s now you may need to scroll down to find the, the s button and then we're going to set this to negative one so basically w will move forward and so on and so forth D and A for left and right. We add uh, mouse rotation X, mouse rotation Y for base bar moving up, moving down. So now if we go here and uh, hit play, oops, let's go back to our third person game mode. Hit play and now we can move forward at the very least. We can move left and right at the moment, but if we add in those uh, controls, yeah, we're moving just fine. What you saw there was our uh, new volume. 
that hides the underwater VFX once you enter it. It does need to happen during play, but yeah, basically this. Masking out the underwater, and as soon as we leave it, underwater's back in. So yeah, this is just a quick way to show you how to add waterline to your project. It takes a couple of minutes, and if this step isn't 100% necessary, but yeah, it's nice to have if you want to have these debug sort of abilities with the game modes. If you're moving this with a project that already has a game mode and all of this stuff set up, you wouldn't really need to do it. Apart from that, Waterline also uses distance, fi distance fields for our shore settings and some custom depth for our uh, underwater VFX. These can be quite obscure and difficult to find, but the best part is that well, in our uh, default, uh, you have all of these setups. So under rendering settings as well, we've pretty much used only the Unreal Engine defaults. So really, you shouldn't need to worry about any of these. But if, I, but if you have a specific project that has some of these turned off, yeah, you basically might need them. And uh, yeah, this is like a quick reference just to see what you, what are, what's absolutely necessary. Now, go make awesome things!